today I'm going to be showing you Touch Portal, which is a magic program which allows you to control your computer with macros that you've programmed into this wirelessly. So look. So yeah, that's obviously controlling Spotify and I can set it to open certain websites. It's pretty customizable and yeah, I can see this saving me a ton of time. I've only just set it up, but I'm really hyped because it's going to be absolutely awesome. Hello, welcome to my channel, Doobs here. Um, I talk about video and DJ stuff and if you want to you know, hear about more useful things to do with either of those, uh, please hit that subscribe button. So I initially got this to control my OBS. I've been streaming every Sunday for the last few weeks and uh, I wanted extra control of how I control all my scenes as I'm DJing. Since then I've found out it can help me with my DaVinci Resolve um, and it's going to help me speed up my editing, hopefully. And also I've just mapped it to some other cool shortcuts and things which I use regularly. So the main competitor to Touch Portal is called Elgato Stream Deck. It's made for streaming. Like streamers need this kind of thing a lot because you know they're they've got their screen up and they don't want to be seen clicking around around their desktop and things like that. So Touch Portal is kind of built for the same reasons. So there's a lot of functionality built in for apps which do that kind of thing like OBS, XSplit, Twitch, Streamlabs, but you can also set it to control pretty much any Windows or Mac shortcuts and, and, and opening programs, things like that. The functionality is pretty open. The initial setup is fairly straightforward. First, you have to install the program on your PC and you also need to download the app. You just need to go through the normal installation registration and you link them up by taking the IP address that's displayed on your tablet and you add it to the desktop. You, you just basically take the IP address and the port number and you put them in and it should start communicating. Normally these things take a little bit of time to fiddle around with, but yeah, it was pretty straightforward for me to get it set up and I'm, I'm happy with the responsiveness of it once it's going. So with the free version, you get um, two free pages which you're available to customize. That's not a lot to be honest. And if you're gonna kind of start using this for a lot of different programs and things like that, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade to the the pro version which comes at $12.99 that is let me know if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to set it up but it, in general it's just about finding the commands um, setting them up to the button that you want and then getting an icon to make it look nice I'll put some links for certain icons from Nerd or Die which make things look really cool but often you can just go download the actual icon for that particular program and just use that and it looks pretty cool. You actually do it on the desktop app and when you click refresh it will all start showing on your app in the tablet or phone or whatever you're using. So this is how I've got mine set up. All these ones at the bottom are set up to control the media which is playing so in general that'll be my Spotify. Um, this is to open a new page in Chrome open Instagram. These ones are set just as normal buttons. So if I click this, you can see that it's set to open the web page. This is my OBS. If I click that, you can see that it's set to open the page OBS, which is up here. So if I go to there now, these are all my scenes within that page. So if I click this one, for example, you can see that that's got a command to open the OBS scene selection. And basically all these commands are on the side here. There's lots of ones built in, like I mentioned before. These are the pages which I downloaded from Sideshow FX and these cost me $14.99. Uh, as you can see, they're all pre-made logos. And what they've done is make all these logos and map them to the shortcuts within DaVinci Resolve. So you can take these pages and then you can copy the, the button and you can put it into your own custom one. So I've got my own custom one. These are my favorite tools, which I think I might use. And that's basically how that works. So what are the pros of the app? As I said, it's number one competitor is the Elgato Stream Deck, and that goes for like 140 pounds. Um, so this, even if you pay for the pro version at like, what was it, 14.99? I mean, there's no competition there really. Uh, it's a massive, massive difference in price. For me, I had this, lying around. I know not everyone will, but you, you can actually use your phone as well and it's pretty good. Another pro is I think the amount of time that I'm going to save using it, uh, it's going to be really big. Just from controlling OBS when I'm DJing and obviously uh, I want to control the scenes and not have to go to my computer and click it. You know, I can just have this on the side of my turntables and go boop, boop, boop. And that's going to be 
really, really handy. Yeah, as a streamer, it's probably quite an essential thing to have for something like this because people aren't gonna stick around as you're messing around on your desktop looking for things. You just wanna have it all set up and you can just press the button and, and it'll happen. There's a ton of other functionalities which I've not quite dived into yet. Like you can set up toggle buttons and there's all this logic um, kind of, you know, if this happens, then you can set this to happen, blah, blah, blah. I've not quite gone into figure all that out yet, but I think once I do, I can probably get some pretty cool things going. Like when I press the button, it will show a different icon for when it's on versus when it's off, stuff like that. Another pro is that this is wireless. So now I can go over to my turntables over there and have this in front of me and I can control my computer, which is over there and not have to, you know, leave my decks as I'm streaming. And that's super sick. I think that the fact that it's just wireless by default is super cool. So cons, I guess potentially the setup time is a con. Um, I actually quite enjoyed doing it. I don't think that the interface is quite as simple as it could be. I had to go searching through Windows for a lot of shortcuts and file paths and stuff like that, which was a bit of a pain. And the other con, which I think is, is quite a, a big thing actually, is the fact that these aren't physical buttons. When it's a physical button, you, you learn where they are and you can press it without having to look at it. And it's like kinesthetic, right? I don't know how useful it's gonna be for me when I'm editing in DaVinci, because if I have to look away and then click it, then that's time wasted versus me just knowing the shortcut, like command, um, either on my keyboard or say I did have an Elgato screen deck and set up on that. There's a big difference there. So that's another potential con, but um, it depends what you're gonna use it for really. So that's it, that's my review. Overall, I think it's really good and I'm really happy I found it. It's gonna give me something to play with and it's really gonna make my life a lot more easy, I think, in the long run and that's only a good thing. Hopefully you found this review useful yourself. If you did, please drop a like. Don't forget to go subscribe and hit that notification button bell so you get basically all my videos in the future about DJing stuff and video stuff and where it meets in the middle. Bye.